In this video, I'm going to show you a comparison between the use of the count function versus the exist predicate in T-SQL. The video was inspired by a post by Lucas Etter at the URL shown here. Lucas's post is written in PL-SQL. In my presentation, I'm going to be using Microsoft in T-SQL, and also I'll be using real tables from the Northwind sample database. I've already got a select statement. I've actually got two select statements written. The first select statement, we can see the use of the count function. In this particular example, all I'm using the count function for is to determine whether or not there are any rows from the join tables, order details, and the orders table. And what I'm trying to determine is given a particular product ID and a particular employee, if that employee has sold any of that particular product. And as you can see, I've hard coded in the employee ID and the product ID for this example. And all I'm doing is printing a statement that's telling whether or not the employee has actually sold that product or not. So all I'm really checking is there are there any rows that exist between these two tables and the relationship between the two tables given a particular set of input parameters. So I'm not really interested in what is being returned by the count. I don't really need the number. I'm just determining if it's a zero or not. And if it's uh, zero, then the employee has not sold the product. If it's anything greater than zero, then the employee has sold at least one of that particular product. And then as a comparison, I've got pretty much the same query. The only difference is I've changed out the count for the use of the exist predicate. But I'm getting the same basic results back where whether or not the employee has sold that particular product. So I'm going to go ahead and run these two queries, and I'm also going to include a execution plan with the result of my query. So I'll go ahead and execute the query. And in this particular example, we can see that the employee has sold the product. I'm getting the same result from both queries. But if we take a look at the execution plan, move it up a little bit so we can see both of them, we can see that the performance of the two plans is very different. The performance of the plan using the count function is about 65% of the overall cost of this batch with both queries in it, or relative to the batch, versus the query that's using the exist predicate is only 35%. So between this, at least in this example, between these two queries, the exist is a much more efficient uh, query. And the main reason for that, if I hover over this output, nested loots output, you can see that in the result, there's only one row that's being returned from the combination, and that's the way the exist works. As soon as it comes across a row being returned, it goes ahead and stops. It doesn't have to process through the whole result set. It can kind of short circuit and stop processing and exit out and continue on with the rest of whatever's in the query. So again, it doesn't have to process the whole result set. Versus the top query, if we hover over the data flow at this point, we can see that there's been five rows. So there was actually five instances of that employee selling that product. And it had to go through the whole result set to determine that. So the takeaway from this is if I don't need the actual count number in my result set, I simply want to know if it's something other than zero, then the use of the exist predicate is much more efficient than using the count function. Well, thanks again to Lucas Etter for the inspiration for this presentation. You can check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to SQL.